Before I get into the latest breaking news of the Tesla Cybercab, I have to mention some quite phenomenal Tesla news. The Cybertruck birthing tunnel is complete and popping out the most awesome futuristic trucks. Tesla's own lithium refinery has processed raw materials through the kiln for the first time and full self-driving version 13 is being rolled out to Tesla owners with hardware 4. And Tesla's share price is at an all-time high of $482. Oh, that's been a long time coming, hasn't it? And in some other slightly less impressive but exciting news for me, Tesla Jigsaw has just turned two years old. Barely stable on my feet, but getting there thanks to your support. Thanks for joining me today. The joy of following Tesla every day is that we get new information about their revolutionary products and how they come to be. A recent Cybercab talk was held by Tesla's lead engineers where people had the chance to poke around and ask as many questions as they liked. Rather different to my UK experience of viewing the Cybercab that was tucked away in the corner. But thankfully Brian White of Futuraza was in attendance and made a great bunch of videos about what he learned, some of which I'd like to touch on too. Do subscribe to Futuraza as he is a treasure trove of Tesla news. Let's discuss the true genius of Tesla's manufacturing advantage and the Cybercab's design focus on ultimate efficiency. This is both so obvious, yet I believe overlooked by the auto industry and analysts. And it can be summed up with one of Elon Musk's favourite phrases. The best part is no part. The best process is no process. The engineers that designed the Cybercab worked extremely hard on all efficiency matters. Weight loss, less overall mass and the deletion of parts have all led to the lowest possible cost to manufacture and the most efficient use of energy to propel the vehicle. Both of those things will allow the Cybercab to be as affordable as possible to summon to your door as a robo-taxi or to purchase and use yourself as a fully autonomous chauffeur. Aside from the obvious things like its compact nature, therefore fewer overall materials are needed to build it, some cost-saving measures hadn't crossed my mind despite staring at it for hours in London. Things like climate control. Now just think about that for a minute. It's not just the energy that's used from the climate control, is it? It's the size of the cabin you need to either heat up or cool down. Now remember that the cyber cab is just, you know, seating for two and it's a relatively small space to heat or cool and those efficiency measures all add up, don't they? You've also got a sound system that instead of requiring, you know, a gazillion speakers that Tesla have, you now need just half the amount for the size of the cabin. Next, just consider the amount of glass on a cyber cab. All you have now is three pieces of glass to manufacture a cyber cab. You've got the windscreen and the two pieces of door glass. In a Model Y or a 3, for example, you have nine pieces. You've got four doors, you've got two sections over the roof, a windscreen and a rear screen as well. But it's not just the glass, is it? You don't have a rear defogger anymore for the rear pane of glass. You don't have the copper wire that travels to it. You don't have electrons that are going to fire through it at all to heat it up, all adding to greater efficiency. Also, you have no mirrors. Now, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, there's no mirrors. Lovely. That's one piece removed. No, no, no. You've got the mirrors. You've got the housing for the mirrors. You've got the heaters. You've got the motors to control them, cables within them, the uh, control switches inside. Another great big bunch of components gone. In fact, switches within the cyber cab, the only switches in the cabin, operate the windows. It's crazy to just consider other cars, isn't it? Tesla even wanted to remove those window control switches, but Nitsa wouldn't allow window controls on the screen, so there had to be the two in the cabin. Everything will be controllable from that central touchscreen, just like your smartphone. There's no need for clunky buttons around the cabin. That screen is reminiscent to what smartphones represented, isn't it? Before they came along, people had to buy a camera, a video recorder, calculator, diary, photo albums, CDs, encyclopedias, roadmaps. You get the point. The central touchscreen in a cyber cab not only renders cabin buttons obsolete, it will also provide an endless variety of functionality like gaming, watching films and shows, allowing you to join meetings or view the external cameras and watch the world go by. Everything that's on your smartphone could be mirrored on that screen. The central touchscreen becomes even more the heart of the car when you no longer need to pay attention to the road. It will provide everything you could possibly need for a pleasurable leisurely drive or business commute. And of course, the Tesla app on your phone, which you'll need to summon a robo-taxi, will allow you to control various things like climate, music, the destination, 
automatic payments, just like the hassle-freeness of the supercharger network. Turn up, plug in, charge, unplug, done. Zero faff. Just like getting in and operating any Tesla, they have removed the unnecessary processes from walking up to the car and it unlocking, to scheduling your climate control to melt the snow or cool your cabin. The CyberCab has been designed for minimal input by its occupants who will just be able to sit back and enjoy the ride. What an incredible time to be alive and witness this revolution in the auto industry. Something else that was mentioned at the CyberCab talk was the sheer number of deleted parts. Get this. According to information shared by Tesla's lead engineer, the Model 3 has approximately 380 pieces. The Model Y has around 180 pieces. Yet Tesla's CyberCab will have 50% fewer parts than the Model 3, coupled with its body structure that will feature 60% fewer components compared to the Model Y. That's roughly 80 pieces in all for the CyberCab. 380 for the Model 3 to 80 in the CyberCab. The cost savings in manufacturing will be huge. Remember the GigaPress, Tesla's high-pressure die-casting machine that revolutionised vehicle manufacturing? That not only reduced 70 pieces down to one, it freed up factory floor space to increase efficiency. It reduced cost, weight, simplified the assembly process, produced less material waste, lowered energy consumption and reduced emissions from manufacturing. Nothing but benefits from switching to a single piece casting, an incredible example of Tesla's dedication to efficiency. The CyberCab just takes it one step further. But what's the end result in the deletion of unnecessary parts and processes? This will come in the form of energy use per mile driven. Apparently, the CyberCab will achieve 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Is that it? Really? Are you sandbagging Tesla? We now know it'll have an 85 mile an hour maximum speed, which is more than ample for probably everywhere around the world. Who's going to want to travel faster than that in an autonomous vehicle until we get to this sort of rapid speed of autonomy? Now that's terrifying. There'll be no need for typical Tesla acceleration either, which will go towards improving efficiency. Despite great aerodynamics, this will mostly be driving around slowly, which will be more efficient and less drag on the vehicle. And it'll also be the lightest, smallest, most efficient Tesla we've ever seen. We now know that it'll be just a single motor front wheel drive, exactly as I predicted, as I knew you wouldn't need to use that frunk, would you? You've got plenty of room in the boot. You may as well keep all the motor and all the gubbins underneath at the front, deleting the need for a frunk. These wheels will be the final production ones, and those larger wheels at the back do make for greater efficiency. I was reminded of the BMW i3 when I saw the slightly larger rear wheel of the CyberCab at the back. The i3 had rather tall, large wheels, despite they were very skinny and thin. We've recently found out that this does help towards efficiency. All these things, coupled with a smaller battery pack, lead me to believe that 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour is the bare minimum of what to expect. But why would we as customers even care about such efficiency? Because when weighing up Tesla's world-leading manufacturing advantage, their market advantage, their dedication to cost reduction, this will translate to far cheaper, cleaner, safer transport for the world over. And as with all Teslas, they have the ability to be powered by sustainable energy, such as wind and solar. And just like those products that the smartphone made redundant, autonomous electric vehicles will remove the need for so much wasteful spending on vehicle ownership, wasteful components and parts that come with built-in planned obsolescence from the soon-to-be extinct internal combustion engine manufacturers. And best of all, super efficient autonomous electric cars will one day put an end to the wasted lives lost at the hands of human error. Before I go, did you spot this little video of the CyberCab being manoeuvred indoors? Oh, what's that in his hand? Could it be the Tesla app with the ability to shift around autonomous vehicles? Let me know your thoughts about this or anything else in the comments below. What would you say to a brand new electric car for 15 grand? That's exactly what this is, and I had the pleasure and pain of taking it for a spin. Check it out next. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, Patreons. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.